Feral Interactive, one of the biggest gaming developers for Apple platforms, just ported the 2014 iconic survival horror game Alien Isolation to iOS. Today, we're going to have an in-depth look at how the game performs on a range of iOS devices and how they've translated a true AAA game to mobile. This is a fairly high-end game, so please pause the video now for a list of supported iOS devices. Alien Isolation on the App Store, or mobile in general, is the most graphically advanced game we've seen yet, and provides the highest AAA production value too. The only other games on this calibre are honestly Definity Original Sin 2 on iPad, XCOM 2 Collection, Grid Autosport, and What Remains of Edith Finch. Alien Blackout in 2019 tried to capture the atmosphere of isolation, but was leaning towards being a more casual strategy game. But now we've got the original game on the go. Yes, Alien Isolation may be quite an old game now, but it's hard to deny it still remains a good looking title. I'd argue that if it was released today on next gen systems, people would not make much of a hitch on the visual quality. The only areas where it's maybe falling behind is with the animations, which can be quite awkward by today's standards, and the pre-rendered cinematics are quite low resolution and only run at 30 fps. The game's art design remains fantastic, and the heavy use of specific post-processing effects in gameplay really propelled the tone isolation was going for. Hardcore survival horror. The game's visual style also provides an immersive video game experience based on its 1979 source material, Alien, arguably the best science fiction horror film ever released. Just like on other platforms, Alien Isolation on the App Store contains the full game. Included is the gripping 18 hour main campaign, where you explore a ginormous ship the Sevastopol, and will be hunted down by a deadly alien, the Xenomorph. And corrupted android robots, working Joes, and crazed passengers. All seven DLCs are here too, including Last Survivor. Oh God. A recreation of Ellen Ripley's final mission on board the Nostromo. Before we discuss more on the tech of Alien Isolation on iOS, it's very important to note the game's long development history, which has helped it more easily transition over to mobile. Originally, Alien Isolation was developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega. On Windows PC at the time, it could get a locked 60 FPS on modest hardware easily. Whereas on 8th gen consoles, such as the baseline PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they ran very similar with a target resolution of 1080p and a delivery of 30 FPS with small FPS drops during more demanding scenes. These systems also used SMAA T2 times anti-aliasing the game looked, you know, pretty good here on these consoles, but this anti-aliasing solution caused shimmering and aliasing artifacts that made small signs and symbols inside the levels blurry and hard to read. The game was even on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, which is really crazy when you think about it. The resolutions here though were typically lower than 720p and the frame rate was often below 30 fps. Really, Isolation should not have been released on 7th gen consoles, as it missed many of the graphical effects that make this game so immersive in what it is. That being said, how they even managed to get this game to run at all on these systems is completely beyond me. 
Moving forward now, in October 2015, Feral Interactive gained license to Alien Isolation and surprised Mac gamers by porting the game to macOS. This version was a 64-bit application and ran under the OpenGL framework on Mac. The port was so great, in fact, that Feral managed to make it playable on Intel Macs back to 2012 in some cases. Then, in December 2019, Feral Interactive ported Alien Isolation to Nintendo Switch, which, like iOS devices, runs under the ARM architecture. This version was, in some cases, better than the PS4 and Xbox One versions. This was because on Switch, Isolation used a mix of dynamic resolution scaling and contrast adaptive sharpening and TAA. CAS provides a mixed ability to sharpen and optionally scale an image. CAS meant all these small signs and symbols in the game are now sharper and easier to read, and the shimmering and aliasing artifacts can be removed. Briefly going over the game's development history is very important as we now talk about the development of the iOS version. Isolation on iOS might be the best version of the game yet, especially when compared to Switch, PS4 and Xbox One. Isolation running on the Metal framework for the very first time, while using a modified version of the original cathode engine and the power of recent iPhone and iPads is a good indication of how the overall visuals and performance can be higher on the latest Apple devices. The iOS version supports most of the desktop post-processing effects. We're talking film grain, chromatic aberration, TAA, volumetric lighting, planar reflections, depth of field. Just like on Nintendo Switch, the game uses dynamic resolution and CAS on iOS to add a further layer of nuance. Farrell said, CAS has a markedly positive effect on the image quality, so much so that running at a lower resolution using CAS will often look better than a higher resolution without. The use of CAS isn't going to make every device look better than the Switch or PS4 version though. It really depends on the latest devices. Based on the age of your device and its graphics chip, the higher the resolutions the game will be running at and the better the overall look of the game. The use of these effects will vary depending on the age of your device and the graphics preset option you choose. A new feature on iOS is the ability to choose between three different graphics preset options. Patreon members will get access to raw gameplay from all of my devices with the frame rate on screen. So check out my Patreon page in the description if you're interested. First, let's look at graphics preset in Alien Isolation. Graphics preset runs the game at the highest resolution and effects possible on your device. To achieve this, the frame rate will be capped at 30 FPS on most devices. iPhone and iPads with an A14 or better chip can usually stick to 30 FPS pretty consistently at this graphics preset, with some FPS drops during demanding scenes. The latest iPad Pros from 2020 and 2021 can hit above 30 FPS. It seems to be capped at about 40 FPS. It's actually quite a noticeable difference over 30 FPS, and everything can be a lot more smoother when in practice. For iPhone and iPads with an A12 or A13 Bionic chip, 30 FPS is still the target, but you may notice more FPS drops and the frame pacing is a little worse. It's still completely playable on these graphic chips, but you may notice it from time to time with the performance hiccups. Whereas old or low-end devices may struggle from time to time to reach 30 FPS, 
such as my iPhone 7 Plus with the Apple A10 Fusion chip. Even if the device is reaching 30 FPS, you may notice even worse frame pacing on let's say an iPad. However, it's not really noticeable on an old iPhone due to their smaller displays. Now over to performance preset. Performance preset lowers the resolution in some graphical settings to improve the frame rate with an FPS cap of 60. Just make sure you have above 60% battery, otherwise you may see big FPS drops during demanding scenes. Playing at 60 FPS for any mobile game is always going to chew through your battery, so just be careful is what I'm getting at. If you're not close to a charger, it might not be worth it. Wonder what the kids are doing right now. Feral told me all of the most recent iPhone and iPad models support performance mode, but you may find some older devices don't, such as my iPhone 7 Plus. I was unable to acquire with Feral what specific devices support performance mode, but I'll list which of mine's do now on screen, so pause the video if you're interested. Lastly, Battery Saver Preset lowers the resolution and graphical settings even more. I would never use this preset unless you absolutely have to, or if you're below 60% battery, or if you have an old iPhone or iPad that is having performance issues on other presets, graphical presets. Loading times are dramatically quicker here. For example, here is a look at how quickly three iOS devices can load Mission 4 compared to the same level loading on a PS4, Nintendo Switch, and a 2020 5K iMac. How much memory does the game take up on iOS? It's incredible to report that Feral managed to get the game to only require a device with three gigabytes of internal memory. Remember, memory bandwidth is a huge hurdle for developers to get over on mobile, as typically, mobile devices don't have active cooling. Even without active cooling, we didn't actually notice any single iOS device overheat. It would just get a little warm to touch. That is bonkers. It also blows my mind that the App Store version only takes up 10.99 gigabytes of storage. It's the third largest game on the App Store, I believe, behind Definity Original Sin 2 and Genjin Impact. Feral did tell me that with generally smaller screens, it's possible to reduce the resolution of some textures without any visual impact on mobile. Alien Isolation can be played many different ways, depending on your device. Firstly, the touchscreen controls are as good as they can be. For the touch controls in isolation, moving and looking around is similar to what you've seen in other first-person mobile games, and haptic feedback is always a bonus, and that's here. Where Feral have expanded on touch input is with making some minor adaptations to in-game interactions for terminals, weapon tool selection, mini games, and so on and so forth. This is a much better solution than just shoving more buttons over the UI. Instead, when you interact with certain elements, a separate touch UI will appear, and then just overall, it's just a cleaner experience. Players can choose between different aim inputs too. Virtual trackpad or virtual joystick, and you can go in and change the control scheme for left-handed play or custom options. From the aim assist option, players can now toggle on auto aim. This means when you aim your weapons at foes, it will auto lock to their head, which is very useful for taking down those annoying Android robots. Another new mechanic is radial menu pause. This will toggle pause when opening your inventory. If like me, touch controls are just not your thing, 
Alien Isolation can be played with a controller and it has full rumble vibration support for controllers that support this feature. The game will change its controller UI depending on if you're using a PlayStation or Xbox controller and so on. I'm glad this is a thing as most games don't do this on mobile. You can also change the controller scheme preset from the options menu, which is very handy. Next, isolation can be played with a mouse and keyboard on iPad. Thank you, Feral. To see a big AAA game have this feature will sure inspire more developers to follow. I definitely suggest using a third party keyboard and mouse though. The Magic Keyboard doesn't have an escape button and I could not for the life of me work out how to, you know, because the game requires you to press escape and I just, it didn't work. And you should use a two button mouse for aiming and shooting your weapons because it's much easier. Feral have added the ability to aim your weapon by pressing the control key if you have no other option, but it's not as comfortable as, you know, a traditional two button mouse. I want to thank Feral Interactive for answering all my questions, and there were a lot, and also for providing me early access to the game. Thank you so much, and keep up the good work. Will you play Alien Isolation on your iOS device? If so, which device will you play it on? Or do you have an unsupported device, perhaps? Let me know in the comments. Which games would you like to see Feral bring to iOS next? For me, it would have to be some of their existing macOS games. Tomb Raider from 2014, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, we, re we really want a good open world game on mobile, Dirt Rally, another really good racing game would be awesome, Company of Heroes 2, you know, a sequel to Company of Heroes, which they ported last year, and Bioshock Remastered, which used to be on iOS, but was removed because it was 32-bit. Maybe you could bring the remastered version. It's very rare for us to have a big game like this on the App Store, so please support Feral Interactive by checking out the game. I'm hoping now that we're starting to see a droplet of AAA games on mobile, other big companies will be inspired and look away from developing watered down and casual versions of their AAA games on mobile. I asked Feral if they planned to bring the game to Apple TV, and the answer was sadly no. I also asked them if they will update the game for M1 or Metal on, on Mac, and the answer again was no. I'd love for either of these to become a possibility in the future. I guess it just might be up to whether or not if there is demand from you guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed this review and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.